I recently had a number of heart-shaped PCBs fabricated in China. And when they're assembled, there's a bunch of LEDs that are Charlie plexed on the front, a microcontroller on the back, five resistors, and a capacitor. And when I turn this on, they're all supposed to be the equal brightness and then fade. And that's my test code. But when I turn it on, I notice that all the LEDs that I've drawn a vertical line next to are bright, and all the ones with the horizontal line are dark. So just so you can see that again, these are all very bright, and these are all dark. So to understand what was going wrong, whether it was my code or a bad component, I pulled out the schematic. And this is what the schematic looks like. Where all of these lines connect to the microcontroller, the different pins on the microcontroller. And then these are the resistors, and they go through a number of LEDs. And this is Charlie Plexed. I have a different video if you want more information on how that works. But basically, you have all of the pins in different states. So at any given time, three pins are high impedance. One is high and one is low. So the first thing I did is I look through and I see which LEDs are failing. And how are they failing? So seven, these are all numbered in the way that you would read them. So this is one, two, three, four, and so on. So we notice that number seven is bright. Number eight is dark. Number nine is bright. Number 10 is dark. Number, I think 13, 10, 11, 12, 13 is bright, or no, is dark. 14 is bright. 19 is dark and 20 is bright. And just so you can see that one more time. See, these are all bright and that's dark. Or that's dark and that's dark and that's dark and that's dark and that's bright. So how could that happen? My first thought was that the pin that's connected to R3 is always low. So if this is always low, we'll just draw a big box around it. We would expect that these LEDs never light up because in order for them to light up, this has to be high and some of this, or one of these other pins must be low. So 13, four needs to be low, um, eight, number two needs to be low and so on. And also if this is always low, then this LED will be on any time line two is high. So for example, if you're trying to light up um, this LED, for example, we need this to be high and this to be low. But if this is always low, this LED will always light up when this LED is high or is on. And so through persistence of vision, what we're gonna see is this is on twice as often as this. So this will look brighter to us. So it could be that. So I pulled out my oscilloscope and I tested a bunch of lines and that didn't seem to be the problem. So it wasn't the microcontroller, but just in case I was crazy, I tried to reprogram the microcontroller on board. And this works normally, but on this PCB, it didn't work. So I thought maybe there is something, I just i am not figuring it out with the oscilloscope. So I replaced the microcontroller with one that I'd already programmed and the microcontroller had the same problem. And then I tried to reprogram it on board and it again failed to be able to reprogram. So I moved on from that and I said, well, maybe if I replace this resistor, maybe something is going on with this resistor and energy can't flow somehow backward, but it can flow forward or one way, it can't flow both ways. Replace the resistor, same problem. And then I said, well, maybe it's just randomly I have bad LEDs and very probabilistically unlikely locations to cause this problem because I can't figure out what it is on the scope. And the signals seem okay, 
when I probe on this side. So I was going through and replacing the LEDs when I noticed that this line is actually shorted to the ground plane. And this never occurred to me as I was probing all of these points back here and I was replacing all of these components because theoretically this was supposed to be checked. All of these connections were supposed to be checked in the fab. So then I went through a bunch of my other PCBs and I noticed that in the same location all of these heart PCBs have a short to ground and I circled them on the ones that aren't populated. And so if you look, this one is very, very small. And then over time, it seems that this short must have been made first and then that short and then that short and then this one is actually the largest. And I don't really know how that happened, but it's an important thing to check for in the future. Um, I hope that was useful and helps you when you're trouble so or troubleshooting your own PCB fabs. It was very frustrating on my side. As frustrating as this entire process has been, there is one more thing I can do to fix the problem. And in a way, I'm lucky that this is only a two layer PCB because if this was an internal layer on a multi-layer PCB, I would never be able to do this. But basically, because this is an outer layer, I can just take a knife and I can cut through the PCB to create a division between the ground plane and the wire. So let's see if I cut deep enough. And now the PCB works. So this is what my test code should have looked like in the first place. And this is what the final code looks like. So thank you for watching, and I hope that's helpful for you in the future.